Hello and welcome to the Free Agents. Miracle of miracles, like a half-court buzzer beater, we've been given <laughs> another show. We are great to be with you tonight from the CMS Australasia Warehouse. I'm Ed Wyatt. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm the former backup point guard at Fort Vancouver High School. I know you all remember me from that, but look, the guys who are really going to do the talking tonight ahead of the grand final series, a very exciting one. To my left, former Victoria Titan and a writer for NBL.com.au, Liam Santa Maria. How are you, Liam? I'm well, Ed. Well, uh, pumped for the grand final yep. series. Really getting, looking forward to it. Going to be, I mean, this is the matchup we've all wanted and um, we've got it. Yeah, we certainly do. And the other man uh, to my far left, uh, former captain of the Melbourne Tigers, two-time title winner, in fact, with the Tigers, mm -hmm. Tommy Greer. Good yeah. to see you, Tommy. Good to be here. Thank you very much, Chris Anstey, for the titles. I'll, I'll take them. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Doesn't matter. No one asks That's at this it. point. <laughs> Last time we were on, we were mm. in much nicer apparel. We were in say, better we were at the NBL Awards night, which mm. was a great night. Are you not happy with I my think you Fine. No, I think not, it you look better than the A little bit, you look a little yeah. bit better. Okay. And the, the surrounds too. I mean, I feel yeah. like maybe the Lost Ark is back there somewhere. It might be somewhere. We Having were, said that, this yes. definitely suits us better. Sure. I think this so, is my yeah. style. Mm. I think we're more comfortable. You can uh, tweet us, by the way, hashtag the free agents if you have anything to say to us, particularly Liam. He'd love uh, to hear from <laughs> you out there. Uh, you did mention it uh, probably outside of mm. Perth or uh, Auckland. This is the matchup we wanted in the grand final series. The two best teams, arguably the two most exciting teams. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get into it. I think it's going to be a mm. fascinating series. What? I'm gonna, uh, this Get is the there. matchup we were owed, I think. You know, mm. after nine seasons of either Perth, the two teams that lost out in yep. the semi final, Perth and New Zealand, have won it the last nine years. Basketball public of Australia, they deserved this. They deserved Melbourne v Adelaide in the grand final series. Like you said, they've been the two best teams all year, they're the mm. two most entertaining teams mm -hmm. to watch. Uh, it's going to be epic. Yeah, it is a bit of a breath of fresh air not having either of those teams. And it, it's nice that they were right there too. Mm, mm. You know, it's not like one of Perth or New Zealand you fell away. You had to away. go through them. You yeah. had to go through them. And yeah. that's how it's supposed to be. We've always said since the start of the year, since the start of every year, it feels like that the title went through, the road to the title went to Perth and New Zealand. And in fact, it has, and it will play out that way. What I love about this matchup too is not only are these two teams, you know, first and second in the regular season in amazing winning form coming in, mm. they haven't played each other for so yeah. long. It kind of feels a little bit like the winner of the Eastern Conference versus yep. the winner of the win. They haven't played each other yep. for a couple of months. They played all four of their games prior to Christmas. They are both different teams to what they were last time they saw each other cracking match. And up. that's the big point. I think they they both really are different teams to what they were at Christmas. They mm. both come so far. Melbourne, they were spluttering. They couldn't quite work out, you know, where their scoring was come from or whose whose time it was when and yeah, then who was the man. Who was yeah. the man? Yep. That's right. And they've finally sort of put all that together. And then mm. Adelaide just slightly later than that. It was almost directly after the last time they played Melbourne, mm. they just started to find that chemistry chemistry and Ramon Moore and Childress, they really started to hit their straps mm. coming off the bench and it was just... Well, you mentioned stats. I mean, Adelaide won 12 of their past 14, mm. Melbourne 16 of their past 18. Mm. So that is two really red hot teams. Mm -hmm. uh, teams that overcame questions as well early. A lot of people weren't convinced early on that either of these two teams would be where they are now. Well, I mean, we go back to the very start of the season. Everyone was convinced about Melbourne United. People yeah. were, you know, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yep. That, yeah. was, that yep. was the team. Aaron Fern came out and said, if they don't win it, there's a problem. Yep. Jeff Van Groningen had his bits and pieces to say. We all thought <laughs> it's theirs to lose. Adelaide on the flip side, they'd lost the MVP. Mm. Yep. The guy who most people f sort of felt had carried them to the regular season title to some extent last mm. year. Um, but Joey Wright knew what he was doing, you know? Obviously, we don't know all of the ins and outs of that re-signing process, but he came in thinking, all right, I've got a bigger, stronger point guard. We're gonna be more balanced offensively. We're gonna be more balanced defensively now in that starting lineup. And then the thing that changed Adelaide completely 
was Josh, the addition of Josh Children. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And like you mentioned, their record over recent times, once he got going, since Christmas, they're 12 and two. Yep. They were eight and eight at that point. And as much as the athletes in Adelaide, it's about, it's about the culture. Like Joey Wright really mm. has built something with that young crew over in Adelaide. Yep. And I say this all the time on broadcast and every time I get a chance to talk about Adelaide, but they are the young brats of the NBL. <laughs> they are, they're just these upstart, arrogant little punks. Mm -hmm. And and they will fight anyone and they'll be beating you by 20, still getting in the crowd like, let's go, let's, yep. you know, getting everyone crunk. Which I feel is gonna be a bit of an issue for them in this series. Is right. that right? Well, we've seen it with them against Melbourne United earlier in the season. There have been some anger issues, haven't there? <laughs> <laughs> haven't there? Well, there have. Some anger management yes, that issues. was one of, that's, yeah. a, that's an NBL all-time moment when yeah. Joey Wright, mm -hmm. was it round, round 11? Yeah, round 11, the one yeah. Before. yeah asking to get booted out of yeah. Sense Arena. Mm. I, I can still go back and watch that. It's but you, you say that like they're the punks, Corey Homicide Williams calls them the rock stars. They will yeah. beat you, they want to fight you, they want to get in your face. Yeah, they'll well, pinch you behind the plate, <laughs> whatever it takes. <laughs> With <laughs> Melbourne are the seasoned pros. Yes. You know what I mean? You get Chris Golden, Casper Ware, Ty Wesley, Josh Boone. They, I mean, you know, they can, as to use Dean Demopoulos' words, they can dance that dance if they need to. Casper is happy. We're quoting we Dean Demopoulos. We, we did. Write that down. I'll tell you, you your, your stocks, watching at home. Your stocks I, I amongst I the NBL public went yes. from here <laughs> to right I like that yeah. quote. You see, you, I like that quote. you got to dance Holy different dances. Uh, oh, you don't ever do want to see me doing that. You've seen that, yeah. Um, but Adelaide get a bit flustered emotionally. We, mm. we saw it at the start of the year when they do all that stuff and it doesn't impact on Melbourne whatsoever. And when things, the tide starts to go against them a little bit, yep. they got a couple of bad calls late in one of their games, the push off from Nathan Sobey on, on Casper Ware, then the unsportsmanlike foul on Shannon Shorter, and yep. then they lost their, their business. Well, you mentioned round 11, that's when they mm. sort of unraveled a little bit. And, mm. and actually Dean Vickerman had some very interesting things to say about that. Let's, let's have a listen to Dean in the uh, press comments after that game. There was some calls that we questioned both teams tonight. Uh, about you know what was going on, and uh, obviously you know they just lost their head a little bit and and, and got hurt for that. Um, happy that we were able to control our emotions and and not get punished for any of those things. They're basically saying mm. that both teams had the same issues, mm. but Adelaide didn't handle mm -hmm. it well. But the scary thing about that with Adelaide is, and they've had such success with it all year, is yeah they have those moments. Like we saw it just in the semi-final against mm. Perth. They were down 18 yeah. halfway through the second quarter, but just as often as those, you know, down moments come with a young team, when they get up, when Sobey mm -hmm. knocks down a triple, mm -hmm. or when Childress throws down a dunk, mm -hmm. it only takes just that, like a split second. And all of a sudden they're riding on a confidence wave, which no one else, mm -hmm. no other team in the NBL can ride on. And the other thing is, we spoke about the addition of Josh Childress, they have towed that line much better since he's been yeah. in the roster, since he's been in the starting lineup. He's such a calming influence on them. Well, he's a mature Stanford grad. Yeah, <laughs> Josh Stewart is the calming is influence. Guy, yeah. Isn't he the guy that like railroaded yes. Jesse yeah. Wagner? He doesn't want you to talk <laughs> like about that. Aged him, aged yeah. him about yeah. three years in yeah. one hit. Yeah. I want it he wants us all to move on. <laughs> yeah. He wants everybody to move on. If you want to everyone move to move on, on don't ram someone. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of moving on, mm. quick question before we move into some other things mm. about the semifinals. Did either of those teams impress you? Both swept, both won on the road uh, in, in similar fashion in a way, but was either of those more impressive than the other or just about the same in terms of uh, what they did was remarkable? Uh, I think pretty, pretty similar, yeah. to, be, to be honest. Um, for different reasons, I actually didn't think Adelaide were... I was more confident, I've been very confident about Melbourne United all year, ever since they've yep. sort of, and, and once they sort of hit their straps, it, even when Felix came in, uh, yep. and when they replaced him with Casey again, mm -hmm. remained confident. I just think they've sort of based themselves on their D. I was very confident they were going to go over and get the win. So potentially more impressed with the Adelaide win in Perth, because I thought that really was a line ball. Could have went either way. I was yep. really struggling to 
to work out who I thought was winning that game. So for them to be able to go over there, toughest venue in the NBL yeah. and win. Fall behind. Fall behind by 18. And win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought that was pretty impressive. Yeah. Really, really impressive. And yeah. I like the way Adelaide, they, they are just themselves at all times. all times. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no right. matter what happens with the scoreboard, I mean, we said before, sometimes they lose. The, yeah. Earlier in the season, they lost their sort of mind at times but in those situations. But now it's, it's so much like we're just going to play our D, we're going to get out and run, and yeah. over the course of the game, we're going to wear you down. And they did that. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm wondering how disappointing was that loss for Perth? Mm. I mean, y- you go down by 35. That's shattering. Yeah. And then you come home and you have that game. Mm. I mean, just to digress from the grand final series no, no, just for absolutely. a moment. You have that game. You're up 18. You're up five. Crowd going nuts. The Red Army yeah. all behind you. You're up five with 54 yeah. seconds to go. Your best player with a free throw to go up six. How yeah. do you lose yeah. that mm. ball game? Yeah, it's a really good point. It is heartbreaking. Mm. Uh, I mean, for them. <laughs> Not heartbreaking for the basketball <laughs> public who are ready to see someone yeah, else win right. a title. Yeah, exactly. But... I, I mean, how big a believer were you in Perth all year this year? Like, yeah. uh, I remember even a couple of weeks ago, I was saying to you that I always tell myself, don't write off Perth, mm. and then I write them off. Mm. And, and I had done it again this year. I was like, they, just, they feel another year aged. And I know Trev's mentioned it already, but I wouldn't be surprised to see wholesale changes in wholesale Perth. Wholesale changes? Wholesale. I'm really surprised to hear all that kind of talk. Yeah. Isn't it their continuity yeah. that has kept them in it the, is. and making Look a few at, changes each year? Yeah. The, the imports, I maybe. agree. But when your core yeah. gets old, look at Hawthorne Football Club, for example. Mm-hmm. You know? at, when your core ages, or San Antonio right now, yeah. when your core ages, if you're not filling up the bottom end with you know, that same level superstar talent mm-hmm. that you rode that wave with, then yeah. that's, that's going to roll out. And I feel like their core right now is old. I think that Matty Knight loss really sure. hurt them, obviously. Yeah. But not, uh, you know, Captain Obvious in a way. But I think mm-hmm. that's yeah. something that, you know, you kind of, some people yeah. have forgotten about. Mm-hmm. But you're absolutely right. I did want to talk, mm-hmm. we talked about Perth's home court advantage. Home court advantage in this one, obviously, goes to Melbourne United. They would get three uh, versus two if it goes to five. Uh, but you could argue that Adelaide potentially is a bigger yeah. home court advantage. Mm playing there in front of those lunatics. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're crazy. Yeah, you said they're well, crazy. an absolutely yeah. cauldron atmosphere. Yeah. I mean, Melbourne have done a great job building that up over yeah. recent years. They need to get some numbers in there and sell that thing out for their home games if they're going to establish that home court advantage. You know it's going to be a sellout in yeah. Adelaide. Oh, yeah. Every it's time just, yeah. they're going to be it's nuts. It's a complete yeah. different crowd. Melbourne is your Hollywood, you know, yeah. let's get seen. Your professionals, Here we your are. doctors, your yeah. surgeons. Celebs. You know, it's yeah. corporate uh-huh. and everyone's in there yeah. for the show. You may, you know, it's like going to the ballet. Is but it? <laughs> tell us a lot When's the last about? time you've been to the tell ballet, Tell us about going to the ballet. <laughs> Not the ballet. It's uh-huh. like going to an art show. Uh, right. Right. I haven't been to an art show. You would know. <laughs> But Adelaide, <laughs> horrible we analogies. know where he's going with it. Adelaide <laughs> is, you're in a tin shed, yeah. right. and you're about to get punked mm-hmm. by the school bullies. Mm, mm, mm. Um, well, you didn't buy into that at no, all. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck on the ballet. I'm trying to picture yeah. you yeah. at the ballet. Yeah, yeah well, I don't, well, if you had the tuxedo on, I would see no. it. I'm not buying it tonight, mm. however. Mm. Uh, I can pirouette. Is anyone going to win <laughs> on someone else's floor? Oh, great question. Can you uh, see? I mean, yeah. I mean, we don't, question. we don't know crystal ball style, but mm, yeah. which think, can you see most likely? I think Melbourne are going to win on Adelaide. Right. We've seen that twice this season. Yeah, yeah. And we going, haven't seen Adelaide. I think you're going to see it again. Yep. Ooh, little window. Melbourne four and zero, right? Four yes. and zero against them. Yes. Yeah. So that's obviously mm. a big advantage you would think going mm-hmm. in there. But you know, again, you could also do the argument of hard to beat someone five, six, seven times. Yeah, and they haven't played in such a long time. Long time. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They haven't played in a long time. Let's delve into the uh, lineups a little bit, take a look at some of the players. Ooh. We'll start with, the, uh, we'll talk about the bench a little bit uh, in terms of uh, what we see. Uh, Melbourne United, obviously a very deep team, but in mm-hmm. a way, I guess you could argue that Adelaide might have a stronger bench in a funny Definitely. way. What do you guys I think? I think so, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, before we delve into it, let's establish who's going to be on the yep. bench and who isn't. Great I mean, idea. is Casey Prather back in the starting lineup yet. I mean, it's been a big break. He didn't mm. start in either of the New Zealand games. Did he? I think he might have started the second half mm. of the second game. Craig Mollick, ooh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, ooh. But, well, I might be wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but 
that changes things. If we're going to talk about who's got the better yeah. bench, is Casey Prather part of that? No, right. I don't think Vico changes that. I think he's yeah. he would have made he would have made promises to his team bringing Casey back in. Let's not forget how big of a decision that was yeah. when it happened. Huge, Everyone is just. Huge. Washed. Everyone's you know just why washed. he wants to go back over this? Because yeah, he got this win. right. Yeah, I know. That's I know. Why. He got it right. And we did. Just, yeah, yeah. it's, well, it's not is, on the run sheet. Is, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the main reason. Right. But it was such a big decision, and yeah. everyone, you didn't really speak to anyone who was confident about what they should do. Mm. Um, except for you. Except for me, of course. <laughs> and so he, the promises he would have had to make to the team. In yeah. order to make that change, I think that he's going to have to stick with. I think he mm. would have been saying things like, Casey's coming back, he's going to p- play the Felix role. Because yeah. um, we've found our rhythm, mm. everyone knows what they're doing, where we're scoring, how we're getting things done. And if, we, you know, if we're struggling to score, we'll be able to you know, look at Casey down the bench, bring him in. The flip side is Mitch Creek. Yeah. Mitch Creek is the starting three man for Adelaide. Yeah. Do you feel, I mean, Craig Moller's been sensational in these matchups throughout the season. We saw him playing against Perrin Buford and JP Tokoto and what he was able mm-hmm. to do. We haven't seen him in that situation. The, actually, the one time we have was at the very start of the season yeah. when Chris Golding was out with appendicitis and Moller started. It didn't go particularly, Melbourne won the game. Yeah. It didn't go particularly well with Moller and Barlow was very quickly into that yeah. spot in and I, I think, yeah, well, I think, I think someone like Barla would have more luck against a Creek than, than Mola. Creek is a different beast to oh, all these other beast. small yeah. forwards that beast Mola's a been doing word, a great yeah. job of. Because mm. Creek will go through you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he doesn't care. He will just go straight through you to mm-hmm. the basket and out-muscle you and out-athletic you. What Mola's done such a great job of is sliding his feet, you know, and he's thin as a rake, sliding his feet, using his length to contest a fading away Tokido, a fading away Buford, mm. a fading away Conga, yep. or whatever it is. Creek's not going to fade away. So you just talked yourself out of Mola starting, but you haven't talked yourself into pray that <laughs> taking his place. You think maybe no, Barlow? No, maybe no Barlow that's not what I've said at all. No. I've said that. I've said that Mola is going to struggle against Creek, and yep. I think that Vickerman is going to stay true to his promise. Yep. Mm of keeping Prather on the bench. So yeah. who else comes off that United bench? Barlow, we mentioned, obviously. Yep. Uh, Dave Anderson. Dave Anderson. Yeah. And who is... Surprise guy, Hooley. Mm. Well, Hooley, Peter yeah. Hooley. He's been Bit playing a minutes. Bit yeah. some minutes, hasn't he? Mm. Mm. Yeah, he's Kyle Adnam, well and truly right down the end of that bench in yeah. this uh, new regime this season, which is a bit of a surprise coming into the season. We, You know, it was his first season in the... Um, fully contracted roster. Yeah. We thought he was going to go to it and take another step. That hasn't happened. Hawley's come in and playing those minutes and doing a great job. Uh, Melbourne, I think, are uh, ranked seventh in the league for bench scoring right. across okay. the year. Interesting. Adelaide, on the flip side, you've yeah. got the best six man, obviously. Start you talking so Ramon, Ramon yeah, right. Drimmick, Dang. Yep. You know, these yep. guys mm-hmm. have just come in at times and absolutely mm. lit it up. Mm. And we've seen, you know, I think we've seen We've seen match-winning performances off the bench for Adelaide this season. I don't think we've seen a lot of that for Melbourne. Adnam had that one game in Adelaide where he had 23. Yep. But you remember Majuk Deng yep. against Perth, against Brisbane. Yep. You remember Ramon Moore in New Zealand taking the team, putting them on their back. They have the stronger bench, I think. Am I crazy or are we a chance to, to see a Dave Anderson moment in this series? Mm. Interesting. Right. Vintage Dave Anderson. Vintage. We saw one earlier Vinyl on in the season. He went for like 20. Let's uh-huh. write that down and show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See if uh, Just mark that down. Comes mm-hmm. back. It yeah. feels a little bit like, and we see this in the NBA from time to time. You've got that seasoned veteran who the coach knows we're going to be in the postseason. Yeah. We only really need him there. Then. Yeah. Right? And they've, really they've managed point. him throughout yeah. the yep. season. Yeah. Absolutely. You're watching The Free Agents, brought to you by Liquorland, uh, Ed Wyatt, Liam Santa Maria, Tommy Greer. We're going to drill down here in this final mm. segment and have a look at some of the key marquee matchups because one of the great things about these two teams, as we mentioned, you know, the two best teams in the league, pro- arguably the two most exciting teams, they've got some serious talent mm. and some serious guys that are fun to watch. Let's start with Casper uh, Ware, uh, Ware against Shorter mm-hmm. to open up with that one. And, and Ware has been, uh, boy, he's been good, hasn't he? Boy, he's, he's been, been really, really good. Yeah. He's been, I mean, everyone's talking about Josh Boone and how important and MVP. And, 
I feel like they've been riding Casper Ware, yeah. Melbourne, throughout the second half of this year. Yeah. They've offens- it's offensively, you know, he makes such good reads off that pick and roll. And he's been, he was really good in all four of those games <laughs> against Adelaide. He went on fire yeah. against Adelaide, yeah. 18 or more points in yeah. every one of those games. 23, 18, 21, and 24. Mm, mm. They unreal. haven't, Shannon Shorter, it's probably the one guy he hasn't been able to get a handle. He missed one game against Adela- uh, Melbourne, but the rest of them, he hasn't been able to get a handle on Casper Ware. It's a little off topic, but I love going off topic. Here's one of the things mm. that I don't understand about the perception of Melbourne United's team this year. Mm-hmm. So... They were pretty average, well, perceived to be pretty average in their first win against New Zealand in the semi-final series at home. Mm-hmm. If not for Casper Ware's amazing performance, they wouldn't have won. Yeah. Right from the start of the year, we've been saying, this is a loaded team of superstars who are going to win you games. Mm. Why are we surprised <laughs> and why do we doubt Melbourne mm. when they win because one of their superstars goes for 20-something? Mm-hmm. Like, that's yep. how they win. I don't know. Mm. A- Casper will go off. Yep. And if he doesn't, yeah. Golden will go off, and, and I if think, he doesn't, yeah. Boone will, and if he doesn't, yep. oh, Casey Prather's coming off the bench. Mm. If he doesn't, Ty Wesley. Mm. Speaking of Golding, Golding Sobey, two of the oh. most uh, exciting sort of shooting yep. guards in the league. Mm-hmm. Will they match up on each other? Yeah, I think so, yeah. for sure. And I like, I mean, I think um, Joey Wright might use Sobey for some minutes on where if he's getting off, off the hook because Sobey's a very good defender mm. and just keeps getting better. I love this matchup though. I love it for the yeah. backstory. Yeah. I love it for the Joey Wright element yeah. where Golding was kind of molded by Joey Wright. Yeah. He saw yeah. the talent in him early in Brisbane and the Gold Coast. And then when he signed a Nathan Sobey out of Cairns. He set that up like a Batman scene. It was mole, <laughs> he was forged. He was forged in the Adelaide Hill, in the Gold Coast. He was. He, he was. Like Joey Wright. But then when he signed Sobey, yep. He signed him as from a DP in Cairns. He signed him to a two-year deal, which wasn't happening at that time mm. in the league. And, um, and he said, you know what? I see Chris, a young Chris Golding in this kid in terms of work ethic, yep. in terms of the hours he puts in the gym. And to me, Sobe, there's a little chip on Sobe's oh, shoulder with Golding. A little. Big old one. He's a big chip. Yeah. Well, there's big a chip, chip on his shoulder. Big chip yeah. falls off. Yeah. Yeah. Just oh, yeah. with him in general. Yeah, okay. But the Golding thing, Golding, oh. boomers, mm. face of the league yeah. in many ways. And yeah. Sobe is a Victorian who hasn't played well in Melbourne a lot of times over his career. Yeah. He'll be looking to have a okay. big game. I like right. that you touched on Sobe getting minutes on where. I think he's really, mm. ever since that pretty much ever since that game in Melbourne where he didn't play because he was having issues with Joey Wright. Drama. That was a mm. massive drama. He's, he's had these games where he just completely locks in on defense on an, another team's shooting guard yep. or point mm. guard, whoever the, the main guy is. Mm. And he, like, he's hella defensively. Like, he can move his feet with anyone. Just quickly before we move on to the next yep. matchup, just to jump on something Tommy was saying just then. Adelaide and their de- one of the things that's been interesting about them defensively is their ability to switch one through five. Mm, yep. And I wrote about this today with, and Ramon Morse but said to me, look, we had a lot of success with that throughout the season. We had success with that against Perth. Um, he wasn't certain they would be able to have success with that against right. Melbourne. All right. Do you think that, I mean, you, uh, mm. think of Sobey or Shorter switching onto Josh Boone or Ty Wesley, right. rolling to the rim or rolling to the block. Right. Do you think we will see them adapt the way they play? Uh, well, it's hard to know because I, I think they will start with what they've had success with. And I think they will start playing their style of basketball. Or mm-hmm. Pretty much every team that goes into a final series like this are going to tell you, we're going to play our game. We're worried about ourselves. Mm-hmm. Make them yeah. adjust we'll to us. We'll make them yeah. adjust to us. So mm-hmm. they're going to come out doing their thing. If they do get, if Boone looks like he's having another game two in New Zealand, mm-hmm. then they're going to have to do something. Mm. Speaking of Boone, let's look at that matchup. He and uh, DJ Johnson, mm. who's mm. been really good as well. This is an interesting matchup. Ah, two yeah. sort of different body types, mm-hmm. different attitudes, different styles of play, but intriguing, I think. Mm. Yeah. Well, these are the two bigs from the All NBL first team. Yeah. These are yeah. the best performed bigs <coughs> all season, yep. and we're going to see them go head to head. It's they're each going to be a bit uncomfortable against each other in certain situations, right? Like yeah. Boone guarding DJ Got on pick and pop. Yeah. Um, and then DJ guard, like keeping Boone off the offensive glass mm. or rolling to the rim. That for me is one of the keys to this series. So both these big guys, like you said, 
or NBL first team. Both exceptional offensive rebounders yep. off their own shots more often than not. Mm. Both of them do such a great job of just getting... Then they have trouble finishing. No, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, maybe. Yeah. They, they generally get there <laughs> in the end, but they do such a good job of getting into the body, getting the ball up there, mm -hmm. and then, re, you know, re getting up there quickly, mm. putting it back in. Whoever out of these two can do the job keeping the other off the offensive glass and mm. cleaning up, keeping yep. it to one possession, giving that other team one shot at it, I think that's going to go a long way. The final mm. matchup before we get a prediction from you uh, gentlemen, Josh Childress and Ty Wesley. Uh, Childress, as we talked mm. about earlier in the show, has been absolutely phenomenal. Yep. Wesley, for much of the season, had been really great for United, but it was kind of quiet during the New Zealand series, wasn't he? He was a little yeah. quiet, yeah. Um, I think mainly the way they were kind of defending uh, Melbourne and what Melbourne were going to with that pick and roll action. And also just Mick of a kind that's the Mick of a kind well, yeah, kind of point. influence yeah. as well. You talk about where players were forged. Yeah. I mean, these guys know how Ty Wesley goes about it. <laughs> and true. Mm. if you look all season with Ty Wesley, New Zealand mm. defended him better than mm -hmm. anyone all year. Yeah. I think sense, if you look it? back yeah. at the numbers, you would, mm. you'd be able to see Ty was going to yeah. struggle yep. in that series. Mm. Does he open up in this one? I think he does. Well, he's going to be a problem in the block, yeah. isn't yeah. he? I mean, Childress is going to have a hard time guarding him in the block. Creek's going to have a hard time guarding yep. him in the block. Dean's <coughs> going to have similar troubles. Yeah. If he can get there, now on the flip side, Childress, I mean, I use the term for him, he's a stat sheet stuffing supreme <laughs> right now, you know. Yeah. And Ty Wesley, I mean, those two guys have been filling the box score all season. Wear and Shorter is great. Sobey and Golding's intriguing. Daniel Johnson and Josh Boone's getting all the press at the moment. This one, to me, Decides is it. the key mm. to the series. There we go. Quick one before a prediction. I lied. I said we're going to a prediction. Is there an advantage either head coach? Does either head coach have an advantage, do you think, in this matchup? Mm. It's a tricky one, isn't it? I mean, mm. they, they, uh, well, these are yeah, the I don't know. Yeah. Just, yeah, pros and cons. Yeah. You talk about the the, the young, uh, easy to motivate uh, Adelaide 36ers. Yep. You know, if you can get them riding at yeah. the right time, mm -hmm. you know, potentially that's a, a massive positive. But Melbourne, you've got the level-headed professionals. You mm. know, mm. you're yeah. not going to have to do much to get mm. them in the so right spot. So toss up with the coaches. What was interesting yeah. is in the yeah. semi-finals, you had the two level heads in Vickerman and Hanaro against each other, mm. and then you had the two fiery characters yeah. on the sideline, <laughs> who Gleeson and Wright. Well, now we've got one yeah. of each, so yeah. it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. All right, uh, who wants to go first, Tommy? Prediction. I've got Melbourne in four. Melbourne in four. Oh, in four. Okay. Yeah, you're going to win it in Adelaide. Yeah, you did say win, that earlier. They're going to win it that. in Adelaide yeah. in game four. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's a big That'd one. That would be okay. popular. Mm. I got Melbourne in five. Imagine the booze <laughs> that would rain down <laughs> yeah. in Adelaide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gold, is Golding going to get booed in Adelaide? He's got a bit of I history. I think he will. Uh -huh. I, uh, I don't think they... This might have been the first year they didn't stopped happen. booing him, right. but I think... In a grand final they series, might they might just you gotta they bring might, that back. They might <laughs> you gotta bring it back, surely. Liam, I got Melbourne in five. In five. I think, yeah. I mean, I can't. Yeah. I think everyone will take care of business at home. You? Uh, I think Melbourne in probably five, maybe four. Mm -hmm. I should probably say three, <laughs> shouldn't I? Wow, I say Adelaide, three. No love for Adelaide <laughs> at all. I no, I think Melbourne's too good. Me. I, think I think their time. I the general public is saying Adelaide. Adelaide. Yeah. Yeah. I like Adelaide, but I think Melbourne is going to get it. Huge, gentlemen. Thank you. Great to see you again, Tommy, Liam. We will be back again with another show next week. This has been the Free Agents. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.